Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. How are we doing? First and foremost, I do wanna check the audio for you guys. Let me know, can you hear me? Can you hear music? Can you hear Planet Zoo? You should be able to hear all of the above. And how are you guys doing this morning? Who's excited to see our project? <laughs> I'm so, so excited to show this off for you guys. It was such an incredible challenge to keep it hidden. Uh, good morning, Silver Fox, you're awake. <laughs> Heather and I were slightly worried you were sleeping in this morning, but welcome. Welcome, Heather and Silver Fox. Thank you so much again, and as always, to my wonderful mods. They have some uh, links for you guys so you guys can check things out for yourselves. So keep a lookout for those throughout the stream. Anyway, good morning, uh, Renee, Michelle, uh, Nubsalot, is that how you say that? Charlie, Totter, good morning. Good morning, thank you for the bananas. <laughs> Jake, good morning, Sushi Sticks, that's a cool name. <laughs> I was actually just talking about it yesterday, how I don't really even like sushi, um, but it's a really popular food and I know a lot of people like it. Hi, Drew, welcome, thanks for stopping by. Nicole, Monique, Toxic Hunter, I got so many people in here. Derek, good morning. Anyway, I'm so, I'm so, so excited to show this off for you guys because this, if you don't know, this is a project that we've been working on um, since about December. So it's a couple months in the making and it was one of the most fun things that I have uh, done as far as content creation, but even Planet Zoo creation. So if you're unfamiliar, this was our blind shell build challenge, and there were eight creators involved. And as we go through, I'll point out their creations to you. But essentially, everybody created a shell. They put down some pathing, some terrain, some barriers, and that was about it. And then the habitat builder had to build off of that and not change anything that was already there, essentially. Um, so it kind of gave a, a whole new element to uh, the creativity that you can have in Planet Zoo because it gave a little bit of uh, restrictions. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. I, I, like I said, had a blast with it. But what we're looking at now is after all those creations were built, I mashed them together in one zoo. So this entrance area you're seeing for the first time actually was built by Beyond Drew TV. He did a wonderful job adding some, like you can see here, a gift shop, and then there's a little restaurant eating area over here, because essentially when I mashed all the habitats together, we were left with some open spaces in between, because you can only put habitats down so close together uh, when they're in blueprint form. So a few creators that were in the contest, um, Drew, Estan, uh, Mast Bandit, and Leaf helped come in and fill those blank spaces. So that's what you're going to start to see first today today uh, is this wonderful gift shop uh, built by Drew and this entrance area. I really like over here, if we're getting started on looking at the detail, this floor inlay here. Things like that I just never think of ever. And it adds just such a cool little, little detail feature. We've got some ceiling fans, uh, ketchup and mustard over there. And then this I was super excited to see. And I'm pretty sure Drew is going to make this a workshop item for you guys. Uh, but this cafe, how beautiful is this? I remember seeing stuff like this on Pinterest. And it's just such an easy like click and drop little cafe to add to your zoos. Beautiful. Really, really love it. Really, really love it. But yeah, so today we're going to go through this whole zoo and just kind of check it out. We're walking through some benches there, but uh, check it out and see how we go. And depends on how soon we finish, we might jump into some building afterwards. But yeah, what you'll see through this zoo and the kind of the point of it was, you can see this is kind of a very modern uh, aesthetic type entrance. Something is happening over there that we don't care about today because <laughs> we don't care about the guests. Uh, but it's a uh, modern aesthetic. And then we jump right into our first habitat, which is not that theme, right? This is very adventure desert. Um, and if you guys are following the series or if you're not, I bet you can still guess who built this one. This first habitat is by uh, Mr. Estan Wolf. And the point was that we were going to get some clashing uh, themes here. And, and that was, like I said, kind of the whole point. But yeah, this first um, enclosure was actually my shell. So I created this shell for Estan for the Bactrian camel. 
and this is the enclosure that he came up with. So you can see our lovely little camels in there. And we'll start in Tejit Cam and kind of go through. And then we will jump out and take a look at the zoo overall. I have kind of a little, um, what's it called? Like route in mind so that we can see everything. But hopefully I don't get lost. <laughs> hopefully I don't get lost at all. Um, good morning, Aaron. Good morning, Mikey. Um... Thanks for stopping in. I'll try to keep an eye on the chat as best I can today. It might be a little easier for me since I'm not actually building. Um, but yeah. Yeah, Drew really did do an incredible job, Heather. All, all the creators did. I Honestly, everybody took the shell and built off of it in different ways, came up with different ideas. And the camels, to be honest, actually, I've never built for before. So when I got assigned the camel as my shell, I was kind of like, well, all right, I'm just going to throw some barriers down and see what happens. Um, but yeah, Estan did a really good job um, filling in this area. This I had left kind of like a blank ditch all the way around. And this entire front part, I was a little evil. Um, I left it all as null barrier. So the problem with the null barrier is that um, if I left it just null, the content creator had to come up with something to fill it in. They weren't able to just add a barrier. So he had to come up with all this custom fencing and all these rocks and things to keep the animals in. And there was also like, <laughs> I laughed cause he called it a Minecraft block. Um, I basically added just like a square uh, piece of terrain right there. And it was kind of like a, okay, do what you want with this. It's, it's kind of right in the middle of the habitat and in your way. So good luck. And he did a great job. He covered it with rocks. <laughs> it looks great. But yeah, we've got our camels. So uh, our camels are what we first enter and see in the zoo. So not your typical kind of first first animal, but we'll go this way. And then this also was really creative. This was Estan as well. And he, good morning, just another guy and, and Scott. Welcome in. Oh, Linda, I missed you. Good morning. Thanks for stopping by. This was his idea to fill in some of the blank spots. And I think we're going to have to just kind of morph through the wall here because <laughs> we're still in Tejit Camp. But this is an under construction habitat. So I kind of envision this being like maybe flamingos or something because it is still at the beginning of the zoo. But you can see we've got some fences back here uh, and then this little ditch with rocks and some fake uh, piping in there and then all the construction equipment and materials. Um, so yeah, that was a really cool addition because this whole area was just like a blank blank area because uh, I couldn't get the the habitats any closer to one another. So I thought that that was a really cool idea. So this is our little under construction area of the uh, zoo. So something coming soon. Okay, let's morph, morph back through here. All right, go back over to here so we get the full effect. Try not to give you guys motion sickness. <laughs> uh, but that's the back end of our camel habitat there. And then as we go along this path, we have a little gift shop. And I believe I recognize this. This is one of Estan's builds, but he went ahead and plopped this in here for you guys. So we have a little gift shop in here so people can buy shirts and gifts and things. Really well done. I, You know, Estan has such a particular style, and I know he's called it like throwing spaghetti at a wall, but it just, it just works. There's just so much to look at with all the little detail and all the little pieces. And yeah, it just somehow, somehow he makes it work. Oh, pardon our dust. That's the first time I saw that. That's cute. <laughs> this is very like, um, I think of like Disneyland when I think of stuff like this, cause they definitely put up the walls so that you don't see anything as you're walking around. Um, I think it's really, really well done. I love all the behind the scenes things people are doing. Yeah, you know, it really gives uh, an added depth of realism to the zoos when you do the behind scenes stuff. Even if the guests can't see it, uh, you know it's there. It really, really gives some awesome detail. So we are on to our next habitat here, and this is by the wonderful Zekin. The gift shop's in at least three zoos now. I mean, if it works, it works, right? <laughs> it's gonna be everywhere, it's gonna take over. Uh, but this is by Zekin. So this is our red panda habitat. And I will apologize because I don't remember. Um, and I don't have my notebook in front of me. Wow, what an ill prepared content creator I am. Uh, I don't remember necessarily who made whose shell off the top of my head. I, I know 
some of them I will, but I won't say it if I don't remember because I don't want to be wrong. Um, but yeah, this one was built, I know, by Zekin. So this is his red panda habitat. You can see the little guys right over there, how cute they are. It just threw in the animals this morning. He's standing up on a little bit of an angle there. Talented. Uh, just threw the animals in this morning. Um, and getting them all in was a bit of a struggle <laughs> with this mismatched zoo and, you know, placing habitats from one zoo to another is not necessarily the easiest thing ever, but we made it work. I love these little shade structures. I so wish, so wish we got a bigger version of this in the aquatic pack because it's such a staple, um, for shade, like a cheap, inexpensive, but effective form of shade. I, I so wish we got more of those, maybe in the future, hopefully. But we've got a little sign here that says Red Panda. Go around this way. Look at the other side. We got a little waterfall. Uh, anyone else a vegan animal rescuer? I'm not a vegan, but I do have, uh, all my pets are rescue pets. I do definitely believe in the whole adopt, don't shop method um, because there's lots of pets out there that do need homes. Anyway, so moving on, we'll kind of go, trying to remember, no, we have to go this way first. So we have a little bathroom that's jungly themed because that's kind of what this theme is over there. That one's my build, so we'll do that one in a second here, but we'll keep on going over here to Thrive's build. This is by Thrive and these are our pygmy hippos. This one came out really cool. I'll show you when we go out um, to the whole zoo uh, and do the overhead look. It's kind of like this little ditch and enclosed in all these rocks and things um, and it, it looks really cool and all this fencing is all custom. Thrive had a really cool way of um, attacking the whole shell thing. He essentially built everything custom. Um, they just kind of went crazy and did everything custom and uh, must have taken a really long time, but I'm fairly impressed. Can we even see some of our pygmy hippos here? They have some water. Can I get close without falling off the ledge? <laughs> there we go. Yeah, so we have a waterfall over there, some water down here. The pygmy hippos might be up there because there's a little area that they can kind of run away to. Whoa. Um, but yeah, so you come in here and it kind of goes around this way. Camera's getting a little crazy on me. There we go. More ceiling fans. You know, ceiling fans are something I never thought to put in a zoo before, but now that I see them, it's like, they totally make sense. You know, if it's a hot day, you put little misters on there. Um, definitely something I've seen before. I don't believe this building has an interior. Yeah, no, but it's just meant to be, um, I, I guess like maybe a little cafe or maybe an education center or something like that, but really well done with all the details. I really like the style of this one. Um, and all the just time and effort putting in all the roots and trees and plants. It's just beautiful. Oh, there's a pygmy hippo. There they are. The pygmy hippos are really cute, actually. And I don't, I, I've never really built for them before, to be honest. Good morning, Level Wolf. Just taking a drink of my coffee. I got up. Um, I had all the best intentions to get this set up and ready to go last night. And I actually worked yesterday. I don't normally work Saturdays and Sundays, but there was a special program that I was um, teaching yesterday. So I worked worked an eight hour shift, um, which is a normal shift. So I was tired um, and I came home and turned into a vegetable. So I got up extra early this morning in order to get everything set up. So I've been up since about 5.30 this morning. Um, it's about eight o'clock here for me now. So coffee is a necessity if you want everything to be coherent. But yeah, if we take a look at this overall, it's just such a beautiful, and then the lighting, of course, as always with Planet Zoo, right? It's always going to be great. Uh, good morning, Addison. Welcome, welcome in. I wish also in Tejit Cam there was another speed between like sprinting and uh, snail crawl. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm just having to kind of tap forward so that I'm not, you know, running through the zoo. But I also kind of want to go slow so I don't give you guys motion sickness. <sighs> Why do I think everything is cute? I think everything is cute and well done and beautiful and any adjective you can think about. Because I'm describing some really well-built Planet Zoo stuff. <laughs> Whoa, 18 hours... Oh no, eight hours, Aaron, not 18. No, I don't think I could make it through an 18 hour shift. No, eight hours. Apologies if I said 18. <laughs> 
no, normal eight hour shift. So this right here is a little blank area that I helped fill in and it's just a little implied habitat. And I was trying to think about uh, what it was for and I didn't come up with anything. So let me know, what do you guys think uh, might be in here? Uh, just a little small habitat with some water trying to think of something to kind of go in there. And then we have a little picnic area with these shade structures. These are from the workshop, but I think they're really, really well done. So I wanted to include those there. And we got some benches over here. Uh, just another guy. Hello. Welcome in. You can see a little implied habitat over there. Yes, silver fox. Animals are ador adorable. <laughs> <laughs> I can say cute, but I can't say adorable. Adorable. Anyway, um, this right here, I didn't put this in. Estan put this in. It's a copy from, yes, that's right. That's It's from over there, but really good use. If you guys don't know, this is like the little um, tourney wheel. What are they called? Uh-oh, might have to click on it. East Asia water wheel. There we go. Not tourney wheel. <laughs> uh, but it looks like a little bench. It's really good uh, surrounding of that little tree. But yeah, so there's a little implied habitat. And then we go around the corner here and over to our giant ant eaters. There they are. So this is the habitat that I built. Um, and I know it was Drew's shell because it was my build. Um, so Drew built me this shell and I turned it into this little natural habitat for our giant ant eaters. Um, and when I first saw it, uh, I can talk a little bit about my process with this one because it, of course, was mine. It had this water over here. And so the waterfalls were my very first idea. I wanted to make sure to get kind of that as the feature. So you'll see if we go up and through this little cave, these signs are also from the workshop. Really, really well done. Oh, I didn't change them. They still say aardvark. Oh, well. Just ignore that. They're supposed to be anteater. <laughs> I put them in and then uh, put the animals in and never changed it. But anyway, if you go around through here, you can see, you get a little view through the waterfall and the little anteaters can come down here and kind of swim around. Good morning, Dan. Sassy honks, welcome in. Oh, the implied habitat gave you inspiration for an otter habitat. That's awesome. Oh, is Leaf here? Good morning, Leaf. Leaf is one of the awesome content creators that helped uh, build the zoo or, you know, contributed by building a, a habitat. Um, let's see. Let's go this way. Could be capybara. Yeah, that's a good idea. Could be capybara. Capybaras like to swim, so they would need water. This is the other side of the habitat over here with their little simple shelter. So you can see we've kind of entered like a jungly area of the zoo. This uh, fence actually inspired, if you're watching my franchise zoo, I kind of made something similar for that. Um, but that's kind of where I got the idea from. Once I uh, once I created this, I was like, wow, that would fit really well in our, our jungle tropical franchise zoo. But you go all the way up here and you get to this top little shelter area. And you can see you look back and get that nice feature of the waterfalls and the shelter over here. And you can see them sleeping, laying down. I think they are, right? Yeah, they're those sleepy, sleepy ant eaters. Super, super cute. Oh no, I said it again. Now you're gonna make me aware of the fact that, <laughs> that I'm gonna say cute when I look at every single animal. You know, when somebody points something out to you and then it, it happens, you know, over and over again, or you're like, you're made aware of something and then all of a sudden it, it happens all the time, it feels like, that's what you've done. <laughs> now, every time I say cute, I'm gonna think about the fact that I said the word cute. Uh, let's see. Going this way, trying to walk and also keep up with my chat at the same time. Really, the zoo doesn't even look like a hot mess. It seems pretty organized in my opinion. Yeah, you know, Linda, I was talking, um, who was I talking to? I was talking to somebody uh, and kind of saying, I'm a little bit surprised at how much it actually looks like a real zoo and and not like a mismatch. Like I, I envisioned it looking totally like a puzzle piece put together project, but it it looks pretty cohesive. It looks it looks pretty realistic. Oh, bye, Renee. Are you leaving? Thank you for stopping by. Hello, Moonlight E Fox YouTube. 
welcome on in. So this build is, let's go ahead and go to the front of it. Over here, Oop, over here. This is our cheetah habitat. And this was made by Zoofluencer. And it was, let's pop through the glass so we get a nice look. Um, made by Estan. Estan is the one that did built this shell. And you can see our lovely little cheetahs right there. One up there. But this one is a very deserty uh, feeling zoo. And I will say when I pulled this off of the zoo file that Zoofluencer sent me back over, it was in a desert biome. So the color of the grass and stuff was all that uh, tan color. I still think it looks great with all the grass, but that was something different um, from when I pulled it over. Because actually building in different biomes, I, I hadn't even considered when we were going to mash this all together. Let's go over here. I love, by the way, Zoofluencer did a really good job. He added a couple of these like little, like the kids could crawl up there and go look from up there. I think that's a really nice feature. Come around here. We got some more viewing with some more benches. Oh, we can stand on the bench. There we go. <laughs> got a waterfall because Estan loves waterfalls. So it being an Estan shell, Zoofluencer had to kind of pay tribute to him in that way. Got another little one of these climb up areas. And I think this one, yeah, it says kids only. Uh, so you walk up there and uh, get another little peek. I think this is like their sleeping area. Let's kind of morph through the rocks here. Oh, it's just a little shelter area. But yeah, you get to look at them there and then you come all the way around here and there's not much of a backstage. This is just a backstage building with the facilities in it, but you can see them eat right here when the keepers do fill it up, of course. Uh, Zooflinter really knocked it out of the park. Yeah, he did. He really, really did a good job. I'm playing in my franchise zoo bottle brush zoo right now. Awesome. Go big or go home. That's right. I don't know what you're talking about, but that's right. Just advice for life in general. <laughs> All right, let's walk back this way here as we run through the zoo. Um, Cause I want to make a point to show off this area that we kind of ran through at first, but this originally, the pathing stopped here. Now, because we are at the very end, are going to offer this, uh, it's already on the workshop and I'm gonna turn it to public so that you guys have the ability to see it and get in here. I actually did go ahead and put real pathing up through here, even though there wasn't originally in the shell, but that way when you guys play and have guests in here, they can actually walk up and around here. But at first, Zoofluencer did this all as an implied area for viewing. Um, so I thought that that was a really nice little touch there. So you can see you get a view from the cheetahs over here. And then there's also, if you kind of turn the corner over here, there's another little viewing area. So you can see, you, you can get like a, you know, a view from all around the habitat. And there's our little cheetah. Cheetahs are such cool animals, such cool animals. I love watching them at the uh, safari park out here or what is the wild animal park. Um, they have a cheetah run and you can see them run off a leash at full speed. And it's really, really cool to watch. It's one of my favorite things to go see. Hello, elephant puppet, how are you? All right, so let's keep moving on here. Spin around and zoom out. Um, okay, so we have to go, we have to go all the way back. Whoops, all the way back this way. I gotta remember where I'm at. We're gonna backtrack just a little bit because we missed, Estan filled in this whole middle part here. So let's go back around this corner all the way to just so you guys have our bearings now we're back to the gift shop right here and our construction area right here so we previously went straight and saw the red panda habitat giant ant eaters and the pygmy hippos over there but if we turn right we are brought back to where we were so you can see there is a little like a backstage area here and then this little walkway. So let's see what we have. I didn't really explore this too much. So we have a chief beef uh, eatery area here so you can grab something to eat. This one right here, I, I think is meant to be like the backstage. 
uh, for some animals. So like keeper facilities and things like that. Season pass. Advertising for us to buy season passes. Love it. Uh, we have... Oh, you can actually sign up here. Oh, I totally didn't even notice that. This is such a good little touch. Love it. Then we have another little gift shop. Is there anything in here? Hello? Yeah, nope. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> it says Jurassic World Evolution. <laughs> Did SM put this in, right? Is he making fun of himself? <laughs> That's too funny. Oh, goodness. Oh, S Dan. What are we going to do with you? What zoo are we touring? So this is the Blind Build uh, Shell Challenge. And this is the completed zoo from all of the mashed up habitats from all the different content creators that made a habitat using a shell. So if you uh, are new to this project, at the very end, we're going to be sharing the uh, link to the playlist uh, with all eight content creators videos on it. So you can kind of watch the whole series and get caught up. But this is the final tour of what we created as a team, as a group. So if we keep going through here, lots of plants, there's another building off to this side. All right, so we got research center and mechanics. I really like this little building. It's very simple, but very, um, very pretty, very nice to work at work at, look at, <laughs> nice to look at. And then we got a little picnic area over here with these umbrellas. I love these umbrellas. I think they're really cool, really cool. And then over here, what do we have? Oh wait, is this going to, this is the back of Estan's like outpost. Yeah, but this is going, that goes, okay, we're not gonna go there. That's saltwater crocodiles. We're not there just yet. We want to look at the front of that first. So this is the front of our saltwater crocodile habitat. And this is Mast Bandit's uh, habitat build. So Mast Bandit built this. And I don't remember off the top of my head who had his shell. Yeah, I don't remember and I don't want to be wrong. Anyone else excited if Estan gets a key for the new Jurassic World Evolution project? Yes. And I hope he does, Linda. <laughs> I hope he does. Kind of help help his saltiness a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, hi, Emma. Welcome in. I didn't see you. A little tired. Just woke up. I know. I, I kind of, I really wanted to sleep in this morning, but I forced myself to get up get up and prepared. So this habitat, um, I'm going to be a bro broken record guys. If you haven't noticed already, I really like this habitat. Um, it just has such a nice realistic touch to it. Now we're going to, we're going to be bad guests and we're going to jump the fence and come stare at it from over here. But you can see we have little railings here as like a protective measure. I love the, um, and, and don't mind the water too, because the water, uh, trying to get it in at the, at the correct level was a struggle. So the original build had the water up here, um, right along the edge. So there wasn't kind of this dirt space, but nice little realistic kind of habitat with a little, little viewing area. We'll go up there later. Um, but yeah, I think this one was really well done as well. I love the fact that if you actually look at the habitat, there's not any plants that the crocodiles can kind of get themselves into, really. It's all up on raised planters here. So you still get that effect of green. You still get the feeling that it's kind of jungly and, you know, stuff to look at. It makes it look nice and planted and lush. But the crocodiles can't kind of get in there and destroy all the plants. So that's one little thing that, that I noticed that I really, really like as far as realism goes. It's, it's spot on. So let's go ahead and back up and kind of go around here and up the back side of Estan's. I don't think there's an interior in this one. Is there another? Yeah, no, no interior. Go up this side so you can still get a little view from the other side here of the crocodile habitat. Oh, and look there, he's getting his, uh, his enrichment. Or her, that's the tiny one. I think that's the girl. You love the realism? Yeah, Jake, I do too. Yeah, I really do. You go in here, so we got some vines growing, some 
uh, patchwork there. Little doorway here and come in. We got a sign here, a sign there. Yeah, even a little interior is done. Oh, look, we got some more education over here. And then this path, I'll let you guys know, we won't go there yet, but this goes back to the entrance. So this kind of connects with um, the other side of, of the camel habitat and then goes over here. So you can see if you do download this zoo, there's still kind of blank areas that we didn't fill in. So you're able to take this zoo and kind of run with it um, and kind of, you know, fill in the areas that you think need to be filled in. Interiors are for nerds. <laughs> Yeah, I, interiors are not my favorite at all, at, at all. Just the tiny pieces and, and all that kind of stuff is not my forte. So then we have a bathroom, a very, very pretty decorated bathroom. And then I think we are, are we going, we'll go this way. No, we'll go this way. We're entering, I'm trying to remember where I am. I told you I was gonna try not to get lost. We're entering the area that Leaf uh, helped fill in, um, I believe. Yes, yeah, cause this Ricey's fried, yes, 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 yes. I know where we are. Okay, so we're gonna go this way. So we have another restroom over there. So we have Dudes and Sheila's over there. Pretty little restroom. And then this, oh, it's the exit only. Okay, let's go around. <laughs> I also like, I wanted to point out, I love how this is planted because I frequently feel the need to cover all the dirt that I see all the time. You know, when I'm, when I'm planting, I feel the need to kind of just cover everything up, but I need to realize that like some landscaped areas, you know, this is totally what you would see. People, they plant them far apart and then they kind of grow in and fill in. So like a newly planted section of the zoo might look like that. Um, so it was a nice little reminder because I think I, obviously this looks really good and it's, it doesn't cover all the dirt. So we have the, the none wiser education center. So beautiful sign there. I'm always jealous of signs like this one is so simple and it seems so easy to make, but I could never come up with this. I just, I can't, I, my brain just does not uh, work and come up with these ideas. I don't know what it is. I'm really proud of these puns. Are you leaving puns in my chat, Leaf? <laughs> Are you leaving puns all over my chat? I don't see them. Uh, let's see. Feels the need, the need for Tejit speed. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, I was just saying that the sprinting man, our our little Tejit Cam guy has got some endurance. Oh, you're talking about that one, none the wiser. Yeah, yeah, that is I love this sign. Mm-hmm. Gotta sneak in those blueprint credits. Yeah, that's right. So I did mention, at least I think I mentioned, I thought it, if I didn't say it, there are blueprints all throughout this zoo. Um, I don't remember exactly, uh-oh, somebody broke our plant. Rude. Uh, I, if I mentioned it, um, yeah, I don't remember who made everything, but just know there are blueprints in here. So if you see, like I know this is a blueprint, pretty sure that one's a blueprint too. Uh, but yeah, so there are blueprints. So just know that we did use some blueprints. Oh, and these signs, these are such well-designed signs and just the time and the patience. I can't, I so envious this one. I love the Jane Goodall one. Yeah. And then we have two others. Perfect. And then this, I love this. And then the little monkey. And then we go in here and through here and we have some exhibit animals. So we have a Gila monster there. And uh, what's this one? Oh, the Terrapin there and a snake, a frog, a lizard. <laughs> what is it? A uh, snake. <laughs> it's the boa constrictor. Although I don't, I can never find these guys. They're always, always hiding from me. Yeah, okay, we're not gonna search. So anyway, some exhibit animals, so I think that that's pretty cool. And then we exit. Oh, that flooring, 
Great. Exit, and now we're back where we started, where I said it was exit only. So let's go ahead. Yeah, the pixel art really is amazing, Heather. I just, the people that can come up with that kind of stuff, you know, I you see people do art with uh, Rubik's Cubes or um, what's another one that I saw? But yeah, essentially the pixel art is just, just amazing to me how people's brains can work that way. Uh, hello. Uh, is it Drizzy? Yeah, Drizzy Will. Good morning. Welcome in. I also love these. Like, look, folded down umbrellas. Like, why don't, why aren't those an in-game thing? Because it is totally a thing that some umbrellas are not always, uh, always put up. But yeah, this is Ricey's Fried Rice. And I, this, I mean, again, the sign, you guys. The creativity and the sign is just amazing. Amazing. And then we have some custom recycle and trash bins. You can see you come up here and all the little handles for all the hot food, the stove tops. I mean, I am constantly, constantly just in awe of what other people can create. Let's go ahead and get a, a overview look again. Um, I use this for my little sneak peek here. Kit, please go away. You're in the way of my view. Uh, <laughs> as she turns and then gets more in the way of my view. Um, constantly in awe of what people can create. And I used this for the little sneak peek because I just thought it was such a cool build. Such a cool build. Leaf, you did such an amazing job. Vandals, that's right. That's right. Attention to detail is incredible. And yeah. Hello, Adam. How are you? Thank you for stopping by. Nice to see ya. Or nice to talk at you, because I can't actually see any of you. Uh, okay, so let's go. Let's go right. Let's go over here, because we were just talking about Leaf. So this is Leaf's Habitat build. So this one... Um, yeah, no, I don't remember whose shell you had. If you're still in the chat, Leaf, you can let everybody know whose shell you had. i take a drink, a drink of coffee real quick, keep myself awake. Always amazed by people's work. Such detail. Yeah, it really is. I mean, I get so much inspiration just by watching everybody else build. It's incredible. Incredible. If you guys are ever struggling with inspiration, just kind of browse through the workshop or browse through YouTube. Look at look at what other people are building and, and it sparks, sparks some inspiration. But also look at, you know, reference pictures. I will swear by reference pictures. I basically don't build anything uh, without a few reference pictures. <laughs> but yeah, so we're approaching our sable antelope enclosure. So you can see here we have a nice little viewing area. We're going to go up these stairs real quick. We got some signs. And then you can see the sable antelopes. Now, these guys are another animal. Oops, going into the floor. <laughs> uh, these guys are another animal that I, I've never built for before. Um, and now, now I kind of want to. Um, but yeah, you can see uh, all the detail on this back little building facade. Really, really pretty. Um, we've gone kind of more into like a desert feel again. Let's go ahead and, and head down. One detail on this enclosure that I really like is the use of this. This is a, a, a track. This is a track ride just without the ride part as a little detail along the edge here. And it's something that I would have I would have never thought about ever. <laughs> and I think it adds uh, such a cool little touch here as, as part of the fencing to keep the animals in. Beautiful. But yeah, you can see our little guys up over there. And we have uh, what looks like power lines going across. And what, what is this piece? 91 pieces. Oh, okay. It goes all the way across. I was like, that is nice. I mean, but still. That's a lot of pieces for a 2D front. Oh my gosh, it's an I. It's a letter. Leaf, you crazy. <laughs> that looks really good though, because it's not like, it's not drooped, you know, because we have that, the uh, rope or the wire that would kind of have to be uh, drooped like that. And this is a nice straight, wow, the innovation. Oh, look, the different colorations are cool. 
He's carrying his little toy. Without the workshop, I would have no foliage in my zoo. Just can never put together landscaping properly. Yeah, I was just talking about that earlier, that I just feel the need to cover everything, kind of like this. And th there's definitely a place where it works, because obviously we're looking at this and it looks great. But combining that with also some less planted areas, I think adds, adds a level of detail. And so we've got these little offshoot areas where we have little water, uh, or little, what are they called? Like food and water stops, excuse me. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the monorail top for fencing is mind blowing. It is. And actually, when I put this uh, habitat down uh, and notice this doesn't copy over when you save a habitat as a blueprint. So when Leaf came in to fill in some of the blank places, I was like, and by the way, Leaf, put that monorail back because I don't know how you did it. <laughs> so he, he had to reinstall the monorail because <laughs> uh, I wasn't even going to attempt that. I didn't want to ruin it. I didn't want to try to try to do it myself and then have... Um, have it turn out crappy because it looks it looks so good how it is. But yeah, we get a nice little lovely view of the sable antelope here. I did the same thing with uh, Drew and his habitat. I hadn't placed the barriers in and some of his barriers were visible. So when he came in to help kind of fill in some of the areas, I was like, and, and put the barriers back in your, your enclosure, please. <laughs> help me out because I'm a crazy person who said I would mash this all together and like you know, two weeks for us to view. So no, it was longer than that. I gave myself longer than that, but I didn't anticipate, you know, they were all done in zoo files, right? And then having to kind of place a barrier around them and make a habitat blueprint and then place them down and then replace things that weren't there and deal with the water. So yeah. So I was, I was very, very grateful for all their help is the point of that story. <laughs> And we got some stables over here, which I thought was a really cool little touch. And then we're going to go in here because there's another little viewing area up there. Let's zoom out so I don't give you guys motion sickness again. We're going to go in here through these wonderfully built doors and come over to here. We got more signage there and then just another viewing area. Like, look at that view. That's beautiful. Beautiful with all the mountains in the background and it just, it looks full. It looks like a, uh, um, you know, all the background with the, the, wow, my words completely left my mind. All the builds in the background, all the filler, the trees, all that kind of stuff. It just gives you a lot to look at. It looks really, really good. Oh, and another thing I wanted to point out with this is this plant right here. I don't know if you guys noticed, this is the underwater plant, that uh, hydrilla plant. And it's just sunk way into the ground to make it look like little bits of grass. And I think I think that that works really well too. Um, I know Drew had been flipping it upside down to kind of look like moss and stuff. So really, really versatile plant there that you can use. Really nice. Let's go over here. I don't think, I don't think, yeah, no, there's not a back. I mean, there's a backstage area, but it's not a decorated backstage area. So we'll go back over here. Oh, you gave credit. I didn't notice that. So there's there are some of the creators that um, helped with some of the blueprints that Leaf used in this build. So that's really nice. Really nice. Always want to give credit to the content creators uh, or just the creators in general that have made the items that you're using because um, I certainly use blueprints and am trying to use them more, to be honest, because people make such great things. How does my game look so good? I feel like you have ultra, ultra settings. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I I, answer, I had to answer this question um, the last stream too, because somebody asked me, and I think it's a combination of my graphics card and then the settings that I have set on my stream as well as my game, um, I think. But to be honest, I mean, I'm, I'm a really bad guy content creator YouTube because I'm I don't know anything really about the techie stuff I just if it works it works and I leave it how it is so I don't have a good answer for you <laughs> I also like this little thing here look there's a little guy wait was this added this is a little Frank guy isn't it angry archer <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Anyway, so kids can come up here. You see these little stairs and they can sit in this uh, this Jeep. 
That's funny. Nice, nice little touch. Uh, Level Wolf, that's not a question I can answer off the top of my head because I, I honestly don't remember. Um, I, I know how to look it up and I know how to figure it out, but I just don't know it off the top of my head. So, um, I need to put together a place where you guys can see, uh, like what CPU and what GPU I have and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I just, I, I don't have it right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I can tell you that my, my computer is an HP Omen and I, um, I bought it, uh, pre-built and shipped to me so I didn't have to, to build it and put it together. But I did customize uh, a couple things that were in it. So it's not just kind of off the shelf. Oh, it's one of those racers from Beyond Wolf Nature Preserve. <laughs> yeah, I knew I recognized it. <laughs> I like him with his little hands up. He looks like he's riding a roller coaster. Like he's just yelling, woo, and having a great time of his life. Really funny. I love little stuff like that. You guys are just, ugh. Everybody that was in this uh, build project together is just so much fun to work with. So over here, we have come to uh, Masked Bandit helped me put this together, or I say helped me, he did it. He put all this together. Um, he helped me in the sense of filling in this blank area, but it's our little kind of Indian market. So we have uh, a restroom over here on the side, and then we come around to the front and it's another little gift shop um, with all this stuff outside and it, it has a name, where's the name? Raja's Trading Post. Great deals, great selection. And I I love it. I love it. And we got little little wagons over here for the kiddos, uh, fruit stand, you know, little things uh, to purchase. I just think uh, this is great. And it just fits in with the theme because now we've, we've approached uh, Drew's build. And Drew built this beautiful Indian rhino habitat. Let's see, can we see any of them in there? I did put two rhinos in here. There we go. There's a rhino butt all the way back in the background. <laughs> they can go in and out of this little shelter area, which I think is pretty cool. Um, we'll go in there because Drew, the madman that he is, did a little um, uh, uh, interior. <laughs> the word escaped my mind for just a second. Uh, did a little interior and so it's all nice and decorated in there. But yeah, so we have this Indian rhino habitat, the details of the trees and all this kind of stuff in here that's overgrown, I think is, is really, really nicely done. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it all the time because everything in the zoo is really nicely done. I love the nature. The foliage in the zoo is awesome. It really is. So this is kind of the main guest area. Um, this was all completely blank. So Mass Bandit did this center part as well to kind of fill that in. But Drew built all of this. And this little tower thing I think is really cool. Um, if I remember right, he did work off of a reference picture and did a killer job kind of replicating it. or Not directly replicating it, but using you know the features of the reference picture in order to build this. And it just, it just came to a really nice, like, look at this, look at this view. You got the Indian rhinos and the little feature statue here with some shade and little seating area. It just, it all came together really nicely. And this path, the pathing path that we're on right now, I don't think I've ever used. <laughs> hey, Zekin, how are you? Zekin's another one. Um, we looked at his red panda, red panda habitat a little bit earlier. So another content creator that was involved in this project. How are you doing Zekin? Thank you for stopping by. No worries about being late. If you guys are in other parts of the world, um, the time zones kind of mess everything up. I know for me, it's really early, but everybody else, um, it might be evening or you got stuff going on. Speaking of, where is everybody from today? We haven't really talked about that. Normally I ask kind of at the beginning and curious, where are you guys from? What time is it for you? But yeah, so going around over here, have another little kind of, um, what's the word? Like a little, little cart, little, little stand here to buy some things or, or this one might just be a, a facade kind of thing. I don't think there's anything in this tower. Nope. But look at how nice the inside looks too, man. I mean, we got these fence things sticking through, but goodness. Turn around. Oh, there's our rhino pooping, but you know, there's our rhino. <laughs> always, always, always. 
But look at them. We've got their little mud pit. Goes down to some water over here. And you can see the lilies. The water I couldn't couldn't get to get up higher. Just wouldn't work for me. Noon in Michigan. Addison, you're in Cali too. Oklahoma, Poland, Arkansas. Midnight in Vietnam. Wow, you're all the way from Vietnam. That's so far. Thanks for staying up and hanging out with us. From Belgium at 6 p.m. over there. God, you guys are from all over. 4 p.m. in the UK. God, I really appreciate you guys hanging out different times of the day, making time for us. Was that it? Was that all our habitats? All right, let's uh, let's jump out here. Let's. Oh goodness, go away. <laughs> we don't want to look at that. So you can see here, overall, this zoo came together so nicely, so nicely. So I'll kind of quickly point out, um, like this is Estan's build here, which was my shell, and then the next closest habitat I could put down was Zekin's. Here is the red panda habitat. Then Thrive, oh, no, we did look at Thrive's. Oh, we didn't look at the behind the scenes for Drew. That's what I said I was going to do. We're going to go look in here real quick. I knew I was forgetting something. But look at this. There's a whole behind the scenes rhino area. How's that for some inspiration? How about we make it so there's not a whole bunch of grass growing through? There we go. <laughs> but yeah, look at this. Like a fire hose, is that what that's supposed to be? All the fruit, pamphlets, look, there's little desks. I mean, come on. A printer, copier, insane. Ignore the pathing. <laughs> and then this, I like this because this is a little, can I click on it? Excuse me, hello, no, I don't want that, I want this. Okay. Anyway, it's a door. You can imagine this kind of like, you know, sliding shut to lock the rhinos inside. And then we got some fencing to keep them in. Their little rubbing pillar in here. The lighting in here is great. I think it's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. South Dakota. So still the United States. I'm from the U.S., but my family and I are packing to my new house in Richland. Uh, where is that? Washington? Oh yeah, Washington. Benton City, Washington? Yes? Oh, I'm terrible with my states. <laughs> Pretty sure it's Washington. Yeah, it looks so good, Michelle, doesn't it? But yeah, so anyway, you can see the zoo overall came together really nicely. So we have, oh, and there's a little backstage area from Zoofluencer as well. You can kind of see that back over there with some Jeeps that they can kind of um, come out here and drive through the zoo. Um, this little, uh, wall is kind of what I put here to kind of fence in border the, uh, outside of the zoo here. But yeah, this, you can see we have our under construction area, which I think is just such a nice little touch, something I don't think I would have thought about. All the rhinos can do their taxes now. That's right. Make them do their own taxes. I still have to do my taxes. <laughs> But yeah, do you guys have any questions or want to see anything that I might have went through too quickly? Um, and then the big question is, is we've still got about an hour left and I wanted to do some building. Wanted to do some building. And normally for streams, we've been jumping into Hakea. But I mentioned in my video on Friday, if you guys wanted to see some River Rock Zoo, I might be inclined to jump into that for you guys. Oop, ignore that. Sorry, I was moving the chat around. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Zeke. And, you know, to be honest, it wasn't too bad. Putting down the habitats wasn't too bad. But um, I don't think I would have been able to kind of fill in all these blank areas if it wasn't for, um, you know, some of the other content creators uh, uh, putting, putting in the time as well. Because I... Uh, I definitely would not have been able to create something as, as pretty and cohesive as this without all the help. Yeah, it will be a, a great zoo to grab blueprints from. There's, there's so many blueprints in here, but also just so much of um, original building to grab things from. Yeah, absolutely. 
<laughs> Leaf River Rock? Yeah, maybe. Uh, do African wild dogs and spotted hyenas live in the swamps uh, while lions in the desert? Um, I don't, I don't know, actually. Are you talking about different parts of Africa? Vote for River Rock. Sadly have to go now, but enjoyed joining my first Savannah live stream. Fun being able to join in the chat. Thank you so much for being here, Michelle. I hope you can catch some uh, in the future. As of right now, we're streaming every other Sunday, so I'll be here uh, live again in two weeks. Two weeks. But yeah, so do you guys want to jump into some River Rock? I saw two people were excited. We can do that. Let's go ahead and go to the main menu. Yeah, I've actually been building uh, a little gray seal uh, habitat. Um, but yeah, so after the stream here, I will go ahead and make the build uh, live on, or public rather, on the Steam Workshop. And you guys can go ahead and pick it up from there. Where are we? River Rock Zoo. Here we go. Um, yeah, you guys can pick it up from there. You can build off of it. You can take workshop I or create workshop items or take blueprints or, or whatever you want to do with it. Just run wild. Um, the other thing that we're going to be doing is I'm going to let all the creators know that they can make their shells or their habitats um, public so that people can uh, build with those, use those, explore them however they want. Um, so you guys can just have fun with it. Bye, Elephant Puppet. Thank you for stopping by. Oh, good. We're excited for River Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if you guys would be excited for it or not. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that link, Heather. You're the best. Yeah, go ahead and subscribe. So, voila! We have... Oh, let's go ahead and pause it, because in this, I, I don't think I've changed all the settings. Uh, but yeah, so welcome to River Rock Zoo, guys. <laughs> if you guys are new um, and haven't seen it before... Excuse me. Um, this is the first zoo that I really ever put together. So you can see uh, this first build of the entrance area is really the first. And it's kind of Christmassy because originally I was going to decorate it for Christmas. But then I ran out of time. So that's why we have a giant Christmas tree here. But if we get rid of that, uh, we can see we have River Rock Zoo. And this is the very first video that kind of got a lot of traction on the channel. This is kind of how a lot of people have found the channel. Um, so it's it's a favorite, uh, at least that I can gather from a lot of viewers. So excited to kind of keep it going and I don't have plans to get rid of it as of now. But yeah, I wanted to kind of show it off just a little bit if you guys are uh, new and haven't seen it yet. Um, all of these habitats are videos on the channel. So if you want to check them out, they're all on there. The polar bear habitat we are still working on. Um, and to be honest, I said this, I think in one of my videos or my last stream, I'm kind of holding out for the polar bears to get diving mechanics so that we can finish up the interior and I can show off the diving mechanics in one video. So that's kind of why it's been put on the back burner so far because we still need to do all the interior um, of the viewing area for that. But I started on... When you come out of the polar bear habitat, because um, it's kind of a walkthrough habitat here, I started on a seal enclosure. And I posted a couple pictures of this uh, a little bit ago. But yeah, I started with a seal enclosure. So this is what I have going on. And I need to, I need to continue building in this. So let's go ahead and get rid of, go away. I do not care about all of your, oops, click the wrong button, all of your notifications. Um, but yeah, oh, the Christmas tree put it back. <laughs> I'll put it back. It's okay. Uh, that was indeed the first video I ever saw of you. Yeah, it was a lot of people's first video that they ever saw. Um, because it was kind of, like I said, it was not the first video that I created. There are some videos that aren't on the channel anymore. Um, or they're on the channel, but they're just, uh, they're just set to private. Um... So it wasn't, it wasn't the first video I ever created, but definitely one of the first ones that, that caught traction and, and actually, uh, and people actually watched. <laughs> I'll say it that way. Let's see. But yeah, so I wanted to finish this off. I have this kind of weird ramp area. This is like the best way I could get the paths to work without being like a, a 90 degree slope upwards for people to walk on. But that just means I have to decorate the crap out of that weirdly shaped 
pathing, but back end of this. So yeah, so I want to get this done because I want to, I want to release a video on this one as well. That way people, um, don't think that I did just abandon river rock because <laughs> it's been what, like three months or so, I think. Yeah, it's been a lot. Are you taking off now, Heather? Yeah, Drew had some um, internet problems, which is so annoying. I just, if you are a gamer or just work on the computer, anything with internet problems is just such a pain. Um, so he had to reschedule his uh, stream for today. So I know Heather was gonna jump over there, which is no problem at all. No problem. He's doing his community stream, which I'm actually kind of bummed because I'm missing it. <laughs> I normally tune in for those streams and, and watch what he's got going on. Let's see, is that part of a, there we go. These flexi colored rocks, guys, I swear by them. Look how easily they just kind of come together as a, a pretty little decorative piece here. Every time you hear River Rock Zoo, it autofills Little Rock Zoo. Yeah, I I struggle with naming so bad. Um, I remember sitting and like thinking about what am I gonna call this zoo? Because the first video I released was the entrance. So I needed to call it something because I, I wanted to put the, the name on the sign. And I, I uh, originally kind of made the map and put a river going across the very front of it. So I was like, it has to be river something, river. And I, I thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And I don't know how I originally ended up on river rock, but it just kind of came to mind and I was like, yeah, that sounds like it could be a zoo. That was really the only qualification that I was looking for is for it to sound like it could potentially be a zoo. And it's stuck. So it's been river rock zoo ever since. But that's also why, like, the Franchise Zoo didn't have a name for, like, seven episodes. <laughs> uh, let's see. My zoo's so much uh, nicer than Little Rock Zoo. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that. But it's also because, you know, it's a game and we can do whatever we want. Uh, I, don't, I don't play with money or anything like that into consideration in this zoo. But yeah, there we go. We have a little backing. And then these shade structures are something that I created that I think they just kind of look look a little funky. I'll probably probably be putting those ones on the workshop for you guys as well. I'm going to try really hard to be better about that, to put more things on the workshop. Because I should. I use things from the workshop and I want people to be able to use um, what I've created as well. So let's go ahead, actually, maybe get out of here. I kind of have been going back and forth with what the heck I'm going to do with the front section here. I think I should start by covering, covering all of these here, but I also need to, should we go underwater and work? I've got to, um, I've got to move all these rocks down. Let's see. And then possibly change all their colors too, because, um, Right now, they're just kind of the default flexi-colored rocks. But you can see, I uh, originally made this, because um, I, I started building this actually when I had um, early access to the aquatic pack. So this, this is a really old build that I've just been kind of coming back to every now and again, um, and I just need to get it finished. But I started building this when I had early access, and when I was just starting to figure out you know, what the needs of the aquatic animals were. And so at the time I first built this, I didn't make it deep enough. So I had to lower it so they would actually do their diving thing. Um, so that's kind of why it's, it's looking like this. Because I didn't know and I had to fix it because I wanted to make sure that they would do their diving mechanics. But now I've left myself with a mess that I need to clean up. You love how round the habitat is. Yeah, so I um, I tried uh, with the doll sheep habitat too. That was one of them where, um, you know, I, I think of, you know, exhibits and we kind of put down a square or something with hard edges and circles are kind of hard to work with, to be honest. They, you know, they take some patience, lots of patience. Um, so I kind of figured I wanted this to be something a little different. 
And uh, for some reason, when I think like, what's different than a square? I think circle. <laughs> so that, that's where the shape of this came from. Yeah, so I'm happy with how it's coming out so far. I actually had something completely different built. Like I had decoration for this whole uh, curved area here. But after coming back to it, after taking, you know, a couple months off from looking at it, uh, I really didn't like it. I didn't like how it was coming out. It didn't quite fit the aesthetic of River Rock. So I, I deleted it and I didn't start over, but I just kind of started half over, kind of. <laughs> yeah, because I, I was not too happy with how it was was coming out. But this I'm much happier with. And, and the, you know, the seals, like I said, can dive. They can go down and, and swim. But I still am holding out for Frontier to hopefully bring uh, more diving mechanics to different animals. I'm really hoping we see, you know, like another update or something like that. Because I think there are still some animals, um, like the polar bears, for example, that would look really, really cool with their diving, with diving mechanics so they can go under the water. You know, we have... Uh, underwater viewing areas for the polar bears and I would love for them to be able to use it but also I was talking about this the other day too you know we're approaching March and if Frontier's kind of following their their normal pattern I'm really hopeful we might be getting news of a DLC fairly soon which I am I would be super excited for because I am I'm ready for some new animals I'm ready for some new building pieces uh, and I can't wait to see what they've come up with because I, uh, I'm really curious to see what direction they go in. Um, if they go in like an aviary direction or if they go um, something completely different. Like I know we, we kind of sort of know that we're getting a sun bear, right? Um, because of the leak and things like that. Um, but I don't, I don't necessarily know what kind of pack that that would be involved with. Whoops. Don't delete that. Sorry, guys. Yeah, hashtag DLC speculation. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> what are they going to give us? I'm just eager for some news. We've we've got a pretty exciting, hopefully, you know, quarter two March um, time coming because, you know, we got Prehistoric Kingdom too. And that one is something I am, I am super excited about that one as well. So definitely expect to see some prehistoric kingdom on the channel as well, um, because that is that one is one that I've been really highly anticipating. Continue the good work with your creations. Thank you, Zio. Thank you. I appreciate that. Really appreciate it. I I have so much fun building and and um, you know making the content and sharing it with you guys is just a little added extra because. If I wasn't making content, I'd, I'd still be playing. So I really enjoy the games and um, it kind of challenges my creativity and such. We're going to cover this whole back, whoops, this whole back area with rocks, I think. I think, I think, I think we will. Because rocks, can never have too many rocks. Can never have too much foliage, can never have too many rocks. I think I'll have that go into there. I'll just kind of put these down, whoops, put these down and then add add more because when in doubt rocks always work always work how is everybody's week i had a bit of a, a stressful week really um a weird work schedule so um that's kind of why i was a little tired this morning and so so kind of not wanting to get out of bed because uh, I normally work Monday through Friday. For those of you that don't know, I, I do work full time. Um, so I work Monday through Friday, um, eight hours every day, sometimes more because it just depends on what's going on. Um, I do work with animals and they don't always stick by the schedule I would like them to stick by. Um, but my schedule this last week, I had Thursday, Friday off, but then I worked yesterday, worked Saturday, and then I have today and tomorrow off. So my, uh, my schedule is kind of thrown out the window, all my routine and, and everything. Um, after this today, I'm going to put together, I have another Sims video coming out. Um, so if you guys have been liking that content, we recently brought Sims 4 to the channel. Um, so I have another video coming out coming out later, uh, tomorrow morning, sorry, for that. Um, and it's a little, it's a little tiny build, tiny house build, tiny house base game build, actually. So if you don't have 
all of the thousand expansion packs that <laughs> that The Sims 4 has, um, you'll be able to download and, and use this house. I was snowed in and couldn't leave my apartment until yesterday. Yeah, the the world has been so cold. I uh, I think I read places in Russia were having a really, I mean, they normally have gnarly winters, right? Because it's Russia, but they were having a really hard time. And then of course, here in the US, Texas was having a really hard time with with um, how cold it was, but also just with, with power outages, right? If anybody's from Texas, I really hope you guys are staying safe and warm because that no power and, and uh, how cold it was is just, I couldn't imagine. As somebody that lives in, in, like I said, in San Diego, and I'm used to like, you know, 70 degrees is freezing for me. Um, I couldn't imagine. So my, my heart goes out to anybody that kind of struggles with that and doesn't have power and things because you get so used to, to living with that kind of stuff. And so when it's, when it's gone, you know, your whole, your whole world kind of changes, whole routine kind of changes. You had food, power, and water. That's great. That's, that's awesome. Cause yeah, I, I know some people really, really kind of struggled with that. So I'm glad to hear that you were okay. Yeah. Cause I, I mean, it made, it honestly made me think I sat down as like, well, okay, if I didn't have power, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. And recently that, and this is nowhere near what people in Texas were going through, but one of my, um, the breakers in my house, uh, went bad. And so we didn't have power in half the house. And even that was like, well, what do I do? I can't, <laughs> I can't do anything. I, I mean, I didn't have, and like I said, nowhere near what Texas is going through. So this is, this is just a, a story that it reminded me of. Um, I didn't have my fridge. I didn't have my stove. I didn't have my microwave, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it was just a weird, you know, realizing like, wow, we, we rely on this stuff so, so much. And when it's not there, then what do we do? You know, because we're, like I said, we're so reliant on it. Um, but then adding obviously that it was so freezing cold adds like a whole nother layer if you can't keep warm. So yeah, really glad that you got, um, you had power and, and food and water and everything. That's, that's awesome. You got to negative four. Where are you? My part of Arkansas got 14 inches of snow between two storms. We normally see about one inch in a year. Yeah, I, yeah, snow, <laughs> snow is for vacations. <laughs> it's how I see it because I'm from California. So, you know, we, we take vacations to the snow. It doesn't, it doesn't snow where we live. So I couldn't, I couldn't imagine being snowed in. I have family in, um, little bit away from Boston. They're a little bit south from Boston in Massachusetts. Um, so it obviously snows there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I have no way to understand what it's like to live in a place that it snows because like I said, I've only ever visited the snow to play in, you know? And then when you're done with the snow, I drive home and I don't have to deal with it anymore. So I'm incredibly fortunate in that way. I know there's some people that really do like the snow, but yeah, our winters are normally, uh, 35 to 50. Yeah. Yeah. Negative four is cold. That's below freezing. Negative four Fahrenheit, right? Yeah. That's, that's well below freezing. If it's negative four Fahrenheit, it's still below freezing if it's negative four, uh, Celsius, but in Michigan, we take vacation away from the snow. Yeah. You get so much snow. I bet being so North, so North. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to, um, like the snow that I'm talking about that I go to is like Big Bear or like Mammoth Mountain. Um, those are the, the places that I have, I've been in the snow. Um, I've actually never been back to my family's house in, um, in Boston during the snow. Um, I've, I normally go in like, um, November or October, like right when it's starting to cool down, um, because their summers are also terrible. <laughs> with the humidity. So I'm, I'm a child and I go like at the optimal temperature, but if you're going to vacation, you might as well pick the appropriate season. Right. Um, but yeah, so I've actually never been in the, the snow back there, but we're, we're trying to hopefully, um, you know, if the world gets itself together, uh, visit them this, this coming Christmas. Um, so I, I will hopefully get to see a white Christmas for the first time in my life which will be pretty exciting. 
It'll be cold, but it'll be exciting. <laughs> uh, let's see. Snow's the best, unless you lose power. Yeah. Yeah, but that's like what I was saying. I, I, I really like snow. Um, I like snowboarding. Um, I've snowboarded since I was young, and I love vacationing in the snow, but living in the snow, I think, is, a, is another another whole challenge in itself, especially if you lose power. All right, what do we think? It's a lot of rocks. <laughs> a lot of rocks, but I think it looks I think it looks pretty. Let's go right. Can we like glitch it? There we go. Disappearing water. Look how beautiful that is. Hey, just Goron. Hello. How are you? Welcome for stopping by. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for stopping by. Wow. <laughs> that was my brain combining two halves of a sentence. Not enough coffee. I thought it was cold where I was. Then I checked the temperature in Alberta. I'll never complain about it being cold again. Yeah, Sean. I, you know, and that's how I feel, honestly. I jokingly complain that it's cold. Like, um, the other night, I was like, man, I didn't sleep well because it was it was not warm enough. And then I, like, self-check myself. Like, oh, hold up, Savannah. It was 50 degrees. And in my house, it was probably, like, 60 degrees. That is not that cold. <laughs> You know, I'm cold because that's what I'm used to and where I live and things like that. But also remembering, like, you know, I, I, I'm I, doing okay. I'm not I'm not dealing with extreme temperatures, you know. Yeah. I miss the snow. I used to live uh, where it snowed, but then we moved. Yeah. Hi, Isabel. Welcome to the stream. My brain does that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> Especially because my coffee is about halfway done. So I'm not... I'm not up to my optimum operational, I don't know what I was going to say, operational, I don't know, yeah, finish that sentence for me, because case in point, I'm not up to my full potential. <laughs> Still sleepy. Still sleepy. Yeah, and then after this, I forgot to mention, um, I'll be joining Estan on his stream, because he's going to show off my Cayman habitat that I built for... Um, Suyana. So if you guys can't get enough of me, <laughs> I'll be back. I think that one um, is thirty minutes after we end this stream, so ten thirty, and we'll be we'll be hopping on for some shenanigans over there. So I hope to see you guys over there. Uh, we, I mean, we got like 45, 40 minutes or so left in my stream, but yeah, hope to see you guys over there because we'll explore the little Pandora Cayman habitat that I made. Oh, excuse me. Oh, goodness. Hopefully I'm not getting the hiccups. That would be annoying. <laughs> annoying for me and I'm sure annoying for you guys. Oh, this one is not covering the pole all the way. There we go. I'm actually really happy to be in River Rock Zoo. Thanks for... Thank, thank you guys for wanting it. <laughs> because... I, uh, I missed it. I did. I missed it. We just can't get enough. That's right. That's right. That's what I like to hear. How can you sleep in warm temperatures? You know, but Moonlight, I'm that way too. I love it to be cold in the room, but bundled up in blankets. Because if it's too warm, I can't sleep either. But the case uh, for the other night for me is it was cold, but I didn't have enough blankets uh, on my bed. So I, I myself was cold. The room was the right temperature, but I was too cold. But it was one of those cases where it was like, it wasn't cold enough for me to be wide awake, but it was just cold enough for me to like drift in and out of sleep thinking I should go get another blanket, but too tired to actually get up. Do you guys have that? Same kind of thing where, like, you know, if, if I lay down uh, in bed and I'm like, man, I have to go to the bathroom. But, like, do I really? Do I really have to get up? No, I don't. Yeah, I do. And then, you know, you sit there contemplating it and not sleeping for an hour and a half. And then you eventually get up and go to the bathroom. And then, then you can fall asleep and you, you realize you should have just gone to, gone to the bathroom an hour and a half ago. Just me? Quick, someone scare me. No, I hate being scared. I don't have the hiccups. 
<laughs> uh, let's see. You have so many blankets on your bed. You know, I do too. Um, my boyfriend hates it. Oh, he hates how many blankets and how many pillows I have. Um, because when we're not in the bed, the bed looks pretty. But then, <laughs> then he's like, we don't even sleep with all of these. Why are they on the bed? I'm like, because aesthetics. Shush your face. They look pretty. <laughs> but that's a girlfriend's role, right? He's always like, what function does this have? And I'm like, the function is, is it's pretty and it makes me happy. That's its function. <laughs> always mostly kidding, of course. Of course, of course. Now, do I want to make this completely covered in plaster? Like, do we want to extend this out? Or do we want to put a little like border on this? Decisions, decisions. And also, I kind of want to, I kind of want to extend this out, but how? This is why I moved on to the back of it because I started building up here first and I was like, you know, I just, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Nope, just you. <laughs> insight into my life. That's right. That's right. You're getting a taste of, of what it is to be Savannah. Hi, Erin. How are you? Welcome to the stream. <laughs> because aesthetic. I literally say that to him. I go, because you don't understand the aesthetic of our home needs to be pleasing. <laughs> and I feel like if I use that word, instead of just saying like, it needs to be pretty, it makes me sound more sophisticated and convincing. <laughs> More like he's he's prone to listen to me. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, what's wrong with Drew's stream? Is he having problems again? Oh, I really hope he's not. That sucks. Technology problems drive me up the wall. Up the wall. It's like... um. It's actually like a, a very common thing. The world we live in now, we are so used to instant gratification. If you think about it, like, oh, I have a question, you know, I don't know the answer to it. Pull out your phone and Google it. Um, that it's really common, especially for like kids uh, getting really frustrated when they don't have that like instant gratification. And I catch myself doing it sometimes too. Um, but it's, to it's not a, uh, it's not a, a fake thing. It's, it's totally something that, um, that we're seeing more and more with people. Oop, that's part of a, why is that part of a group? I don't, I don't want that to be part of a group. Can I have just this rock? Thanks. Um, instant gratification. Yeah. But anyway, my point being that I hope he's not having internet problems. I hope not. Yeah, his internet's been super wonky. Well, he is up north, right? He's in he's in um, Illinois. And I know his weather hasn't been too, too bad that I can remember. But um, yeah, that, that sucks. Poor Drew. He ended the stream internet. Yeah, that's such a bummer. Especially as a content creator, like I know myself, like I put, I put planning and work into like what we're going to do and, and stuff like that. So it's just such a letdown when it's like, when it's not your fault, you know, like you, you, it's not for, for lack of planning. It's not for lack of being prepared. It's your stupid internet. And that goes back to my whole point. Like we rely so much on our technology and things like that, that when it doesn't work, it really throws off, throws off what we want to do. Hey, Nick, welcome to the stream. I recognize your name. Thank you for the comments that you always leave on my videos. I really appreciate it. I love the comments. Hi, Lion Rider. How are you? Welcome to the stream. Thanks for stopping by. We're placing lots and lots of rocks. <laughs> We're placing lots of rocks and talking about life things. That's our stream today. Insight into Savannah's life while we place loads and loads of rocks. 
you put laminate floor in and your dog's not able to walk on it. You know, my, so I have a little Husky mix. Um, her name is Nalu and she's about nine months old now, but that dog has no traction on my tile floor. <laughs> it is probably one of the funniest things that I watch because she has, um, being a Husky, her, her paws, the underneath of her paws has a bunch of hair in between her paw pads because, you know, she's built for the snow. Um, and running around, she slips and slides and, uh, it's hilarious to watch her, but I'm also worried, you know, eventually she's going to get hurt. She's such a silly little thing, but she's a crazy psychopath sometimes too, with her zoomies being a husky and high energy, but also a puppy is just hilarious most of the time until, you know, until you want to go to bed and she doesn't, <laughs> then it's not so hilarious. But she's a good little girl. Rock Savannah's Insight and Chill. Exactly. Change the name of the stream right now. <laughs> Change the name of the stream because that's what we're going with. Let's see. I don't know if I'm going to like this, but we're going to try it. And then we're going to see how it looks. I have to remind myself sometimes that things can be changed. You know, it's not like... It's not like I placed this temple piece down and now it must stay forever. I don't remember that I can, I can try things and then change it if I want to. This, I don't, path dipping down there bothers me, but we're going to have to get over it because I am not removing it and trying to replace it again. Husky puppies are the cutest. Oh, she talks back, Silver Fox. She is a sassy little monster. She is. Um, it makes me laugh because I will give her a command, you know, like, you know, lay down or sit or stop eating your brother kind of thing. Um, and she sits back and she roo, 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 like tells me, screw you, mom. I do what I want. It's the funniest thing. Funniest thing in the whole world. She's so cute. So cute. But also again, like if I really just need her to listen to me right now, I'm like, Sh shut up. Don't back sass me. Puppy dog. But yeah, she's great. She's a she's a huge ball of energy. I need this this color. Go away. And here and here and go and yes, great. Yeah, Drew did have some issues with his showcase this week. And I was just saying how like how frustrated I am for him cuz that's just such a irritating thing. Ugh internet problems. I hope he gets it figured out because I, I really love the showcases that he does. I love seeing what everybody else is creating. Yes, absolutely. Silver Fox, you can see some videos. Um, if I happen to catch her because, um, sometimes she doesn't, I don't have like my phone out or something and then I miss it. So I will try, but absolutely. You guys can see pictures and videos and things like that. And, and when I do, so, um, uh, have been thinking about installing a webcam for you guys for our streams, um, setting up a puppy cam. So you guys can look at what you really came to the streams for, and that would be the doggos. Because I have three of them. And you can watch all three of them as I stream. And hopefully they'll be good doggos. And uh, when we do stream, you know, sit quietly and not disrupt things. see still trying to figure out the random uh planet zoo crashes oh is your game crashing that's annoying i uh i was having that a little bit ago um and then i realized that it was my fault <laughs> I, re I realized that i had done something uh and it was causing the game to crash so it was an easy fix in the sense of it was something I was doing, so I was able to fix it. Not like a, not like it was the game glitching or something like that. Do we like this blue color continuing through here? I, I feel like, I feel like we might make this a different texture. Let's see. Even though I just filled it in, let's let's experiment. Experiment was that word, by the way. I just said it strangely. Um, let's go here and oops, nope, go away. Go over here, go to roofs, flat roofs. Let's see what we have. Um, or no, you know what? 
let's let's do this let's go to aquatic pack and get those off the grid these pieces yeah so if we oops come back we get this piece uh, we'll probably need to flatten it oh yeah that's gonna fit okay so let's put that there let's delete this let's take this and if we can get this yeah, there we go. I think that'll look better because then it'll just look like a continuation of, of this flooring, right? And then we'll put down we'll put down something over here so that it is uh, kind of cohesive. The only problem, only problem is if we do this, then are we going to get weird? I guess. I guess that's okay. That overlapping is what I was worried about, but I think that that looks okay. Yeah, we'll just do this. Big dogs are the best. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm a, a dog person uh, in general, obviously, because I'm just an animal person. Um, but as far as the dogs that I own, I've always owned big dogs. Uh, my first dog, um, the family dog that we had growing up was a German Shepherd. Um, it was a white shepherd yellow lab mix. So it was a white German shepherd yellow lab mix. And he was one of the best dogs we had. He was so incredibly smart. Um, and then the next dog that we had growing up was a Great Dane black lab mix. So he was massive. Um, Cause being part Great Dane, he was like 115 pounds. He was a huge dog. Then the dogs that I have now are, um, one is a cattle dog Husky mix. Um, he's kind of a medium sized dog. He's not too big, um, but he's the biggest dog that I have. Um, and then I have a pit bull lab mix and he is, he's got something else in him. I'm sure of it because he is, he's small. So he's, he's smaller than both a lab and a pit bull. Um, but he looks kind of like a pit bull. Um, and then I obviously have my Husky mix and she's Husky Malamute German Shepherd lab. We did a little DNA thing on her. So that's how I kind of know a lot of those breeds that are in her. Um, as, as long as those little DNA thingies are accurate. That's what it said. Let's see. Maybe rotate it so the planks are parallel. I don't know. I kind of like this better because the problem is I think it would drive me up the wall if we rotate it. Did I place this one already? I did. If we rotate it, I don't think that when we kind of go around the corner that these lines are going to follow each other nicely. And I, I feel like that would bother me. But as we are right now, it just makes little V sections, which I think I think looks a little better. So I think I might keep it like this for now. But that's a good suggestion. Thank you. And we're gonna recolor it so it's not purple. <laughs> Cause I don't I don't like the color it comes in. But I I like this piece. It's probably my favorite piece from the aquatic pack is the um it's called plank boards paneling. There you go. Panel wall pieces. Uh bye Dominic. Thank you for stopping by. Happy to have you hanging out with us. I'm starting, starting to, uh, recognize, recognize names, uh, from people that have been here before and are frequently hanging out. So I'm excited about that. Cause I am, I am awful with names, awful, atrocious. <laughs> I was just, like I said, I was just teaching, um, yesterday at work. And so I had some students with me and it's one of the first things I always say, like, okay, guys, I'm going to re repeat your names like a thousand times because it's the only way I can memorize them because I'm so bad at remembering names. So, um, trying to remember names and things like that. The only dog I ever had was bone in Minecraft. <laughs> I mean, still a dog, right? You don't necessarily have to take care of it, but you have to not lose it. Let's see, what color can we make this? Should we make it like a matching, or not a matching, but like a lighter, lighter color? Or like a, a whoa, not that dark. I don't know how I feel about this now. I don't know how I feel about the temple piece. Let's see, what do we have going on? 
It's all this pathing throughout the zoo and concrete. So what if, oh, what if we, let's try this. What if we change it to concrete instead? And we just have this part be concrete. Does that look a little better? Honestly, I think that looks a little better. But also maybe changing this to be a little bit lighter. Uh, not that light. I don't want it to be white. Like that? How does that look? I think that looks a little better, yeah? Hi, Carly. You missed the beginning of the stream. No worries. We toured the zoo and it'll be up on the channel so you can rewatch it if you really want to um, see the blind build challenge uh, contest that we toured. But happy to have you here now. Thank you for stopping by. Up until recently, Microsoft Teams only showed last names. Oh, which upset our teachers because there was no way for them to learn our names. Oh, that's interesting. Your Chihuahua loves to catch toys uh, when you throw them up in the air. It's so cute. Oh, did she jump for them? My, um, my cattle dog Husky mix is really good at catching treats. If you toss treats up in the air, he, um, he jumps for them and I can kind of throw them across the room and he'll catch them. Um, he's really talented. He's very smart. He's very smart. He's my good boy. If we're counting Minecraft dogs, I'm at like 300. How did you find 300 dogs in Minecraft? I feel like whenever I go looking for dogs, I can only never, or I can never find them at all. But I also try to go hunting for um, cats in Minecraft because I like having like a thousand cats. <laughs> my boyfriend put a limit on my cats in real life. So I'm like, okay, fine. In Minecraft, we're going to have a million. Take that. <laughs> I haven't played Minecraft in a while, actually, to be honest. I used to play all the time, all the time. But yeah, I haven't played, I haven't played in a good while. No, oh, she does jump in the air. That's so cute. And she's so small. I imagine she doesn't get very high. Yeah, if Koa jumps, um, my cattle dog Husky Mix, he, he kind of gets way up in the air. But he's also a big dog. Should we put... I, don't, I actually don't know if I can put a uh, path closer to this. I think I might have gotten it as close as it can go. Oh, no. Okay, we can put path. So let's put a little path right here. Like so. And then let's go back over here. Was this the... Yeah. Oh, no. Not that big. Go this way back to here. Like that. And then we'll connect this up over here. do something like this. Oh, nope. I didn't want that to go away completely. There we go. So we have a little bit of, actually, will that connect? Oh, it will. If we do that. And then if we take this rock figure, rock formation and rotate it, and put it back over a little bit like so. I'm okay if it kind of glitches through the path just a little bit. And through the, I don't necessarily want it through the glass. Take that rock, push that in, push that in. There we go. Yeah, there we go. So now we have a walkway. We'll have to decorate that, of course. And I'm planning on kind of merging these two rock areas together, which actually came out kind of nice. It was unintentional, but I built up this whole kind of rock wall for our polar bears. Um, it's going to merge really nicely with this once we actually do it. Minecraft was everybody's childhood. Childhood? You know what? It actually wasn't my childhood, though. I didn't play Minecraft until about five years ago. Um, so I haven't been playing that long. And even, even when I play, I've, I've never played, um, 
Java. I've only ever played Bedrock and on the console. So I've never played Minecraft on the computer. I have an empty dishwasher, but I'll be back soon. Good job doing your dishes. I hate doing the dishes. <laughs> I think we talked about that in another stream is that's like my least favorite chore ever. So good on you for doing your dishes. Clean dishes to eat on is always a good idea. What time is it? We got about 20 minutes left. I got to make sure to end the stream on time today because uh, because like I said, we're going to be joining Estan and I'm hungry and I want to be able to snack. So I'm not, um, I'm not fussy. <laughs> Does anybody else get hangry? We're back to insights into Savannah's life. I get hangry real easily. Real easily. If we don't feed me at an appropriate time, I get a little bit fussy. Being fussy is no fun. No fun for the people around me, but also no fun for me. My own grandma's dog uh, chases me, even though I knew it since it was uh, born. Aww. Gen Z's people, Gen Z people's childhood, I guess. Yeah, maybe. I'm terrible with those generations, so I don't, I don't actually know which one I belong to or who belongs to the other ones. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, I played it, like I said, starting about five years ago and played it super religiously, basically, um, all the time for a long time and then just kind of fell out of it, fell out of it for whatever reason. But maybe I'll, I'll get back into it. My boyfriend still plays quite often. Um, he likes he likes playing Minecraft. But I just I have not gotten back into it recently. Let's go ahead and make all this rock so I don't have to worry too much about what we're doing. We gotta change all the colors of these rocks too because, oh, that's something I should have been doing because now all these are single rocks. Darn it. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, let's, should we attempt that? Let's see. If we make all these as much as we can, all one group. This shouldn't be too bad. There's just a lot of rocks to click on, that's all. So I try to I try to build with these rocks in a group because then you can just select the whole group and like if you so those are all one group right so now you can select them all and color them at the same time but if we do this and we delete that it'll come back it's okay but just so we can get the rocks that we missed underneath here and then we hit Control Z and we select that as well and now we add it to a group again now you can see that's all in one group. So we continue our selection process here. All of these in the group as well. Select, select, oops, select. And then select that as well. Now it's, oops, that's not what I meant to click. <laughs> that one right there. So now what we can do is select all of these and change a color. And when you have multiple selected, that annoying blue hue is gone. So now you can see, like, I'll change these and we can see exactly what they look like. Um, so let's see. I kind of want them to be more of a gray -y color. So maybe that color, but then if we select some of the random ones and change them to this other color. Yeah. And then dark highlights, I think. Make all of them dark highlights. Or low lights, I guess, if it's a dark color. But yeah, let's let's change this one to be lighter. Yeah, see if you only have one selected, this blue hue prevents you from actually seeing what color it is. Um, and I find it very annoying. So I try to select multiple at a time so that you can see. Primal, are you here? Oh, you fell asleep during the stream. <laughs> That's okay. It'll be back up. You can rewatch it. But I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for stopping by. So brave with deletions. I'd be so afraid to lose everything. Now, nah, if you only delete, like I said, only delete once. Um, it's frequently how I select things that are hard to select. Is if you delete, select the thing you're trying to grab, and then hit Control Z. 
um, it comes back very easy. So like delete and then control Z. Just don't get doing it a whole bunch of times um, because that's where you can, you can run into problems. Um, but yeah, so we'll continue selecting all these rocks over here, make them all part of a group. Um, oh, these rocks, we're going to have to go in because these ones, I think, yeah, these are part of a group. So I'm going to split these rocks out. Uh, this rock, this rock out. And then I think this rock is part of a group as well. Um, so yeah, so just little tips and tricks. If you can't, if you can't select an item, just delete the ones that are on top of it. And then, um, control Z will bring it back while the item that you wanted is still, still selected. And that way you don't have to like zoom in or fuss with it or anything like that. Oops. That's a tree. I don't want that. Or a bush. I don't want the plants. I want the rocks. These little rocks are what's going to be a pain in the butt because I've sunk them down into the ground. So their little hit boxes are going to be kind of hard to to get. There we go. All those rocks. So now if we know we've done it right by selecting all of those. And yes, we have the ability to recolor because they're all the same rock. What do these look like if we do light color? No, I like the dark color. And then let's go through and select some random ones. Whoopsies. We don't click another group on accident. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> Got to be a little bit more controlled with my clicking. Let's go ahead and do light here. And yeah. Yeah, that looks more river rocky. This right here doesn't look so river rocky. It's a new, new, ver er, new uh, adjective, river rocky. All right, and we continue our process of selecting rocks. Tedious, but important. So like, so for example, this right here, being a pain in the butt, I need to get rid of, get rid of, get rid of, get rid of. Now with my selection tool, I should be able to get this front facing rock here. It's still selected. Z, 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 everything is back. I can make this into a group and I can recolor it. So now if I select this, oops, I'm gonna have to delete it again. There we go, Z, Z, great. Now I can do this color. Makes things just a bit easier sometimes. There we go. Let's see. Thank you, Silver Fox. I'm happy with how this one's coming out. Can I have, and sometimes you just have to do it over and over again because the alternative is like zooming in on it, right? To try to get it. Um, so I find, whoops, I find um, the other method can be easier sometimes if the hitboxes aren't aren't cooperating with you. Let's go ahead and do all these rocks. But I still do love these flexi colored rocks. They are everything. Your T-Rex and Indominus are fighting. That's a scary fight. T-Rex wins though, right? T-Rex always wins. He's the king. Whoops, that's not the color I want. <laughs> Let's see. Um, get all these little rocks. I actually just finished watching the um, Jurassic Park slash Jurassic World movies. I watched them all in order. I really like those movies. Jurassic Park especially. But yeah, I just finished watching all those and um, really enjoy them. Good movies. I like the original Jurassic Park movies are, are the best. Although if I have to say, I'm not, I'm not a huge, like if I have to pick, I'm not a huge fan of the second one. Um, because, uh, um, I just, I don't know. I just find it to be my least favorite out of all of them. But I like, I like Jurassic Park, um, the third one. And I really like obviously the first one because the first one is fantastic. And I am kind of excited for the new Jurassic World movies to come out. Um, because although I, d I don't think they're like as good as the originals, I like them. Oops, I think I went back one, one step too far. There we go. Can I get this one? Nope. There. I did have it. Great. Change it. Perfect. There. Perfect. Great. 
but there's a storm in your park and raptors are being raptors. Uh, if you like the Jurassic World, Jurassic movies, then definitely recommend Camp Cretaceous on Netflix. I heard somebody talking about that and I didn't, is it a show or is it a movie? Because I, I, I'm confused as to what it is. I agree. The original Jurassic Park is the best. The third is great and Jurassic World films are so good too. Yeah, I really like them. Uh, they're on a killing spree. Uh-oh. You better get your animal containment unit um, on that with some uh, tranquilizer dart so they don't kill everyone. Because, you know, that's that never happens in Jurassic Park, Jurassic World movies. <laughs> right? The premise of basically every movie is, look at these beautiful dinosaurs. We can keep them contained. Nobody's going to get hurt. Oh my gosh, they're not contained. Everybody's getting hurt. There you go. I just summarized every single movie for you. <laughs> uh, but I still recommend watching them. They're still good movies. They're still entertaining. <laughs> well, that's too dark. Is that the color we're using? Yeah, I guess so, huh? Uh, I want it like happy medium here. Oh, it's a cartoon on Netflix. I'll have to check it out because I definitely do have Netflix. So I will. I'll have to look into that because um, I do like dinosaur movies. Yeah, Combat Wombat. We're talking about Jurassic World. Jurassic World. Um, I'm pretty excited. I talked about it earlier. Spoilers. That's right. I just ruined every movie for you. I'm sorry. But like I said, still watch them because my summary is not that great. Oh, I'm almost out of coffee. Oh, no. That's all right. Try to limit myself that way. I don't have too, too much. I'm trying to decide what I'm going to have for uh, my breakfast snack before we hop in with Estan um, on his stream. Why? I don't want that. I don't have much here, so I'm trying to decide if I should run and go grab something real quick, but I only have 30 minutes. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> There we go. All right, I think I think that's looking pretty good. Let's uh, let's continue this because I kind of forgot about this around the other side. Over here, pull that in. Voila, edging this off so it doesn't look such like a disaster. You know, uh, Nick, the aquatic pack is is probably one of my favorites. Not just because it's the newest, but because that pack is the one that they added a lot of the um, like more realistic zoo pieces in. Uh, so like the build pieces were pretty cool. Not to mention, I mean, obviously the di diving um, uh, animations are are pretty pretty awesome as well. But um, next to that is the Australian pack. The Australian pack is probably my second favorite. Because I loved, I loved the aesthetic of that pack as well. Let's see. Let's just continue this on over here. I'll have to pull it forward a little bit because there's a gap. Scuttles back in. Hello, Sassy Honks. Welcome back. Let's see. Pull this forward. Whoop, not too far forward. Great. And then we're going to hide it with some of those rocks because we have, have a little bit of a gap. Whoops, wrong button. That I've been struggling recently um, because I've been playing The Sims. The rotate buttons are different between games. And so <laughs> when I switch, like this morning I was doing it when I was putting in the animals in the contest uh, zoo, I was hitting the wrong rotating buttons and I uh, was having to switch over because it's just such muscle memory, you know, when you're playing these different games. I was having to remind myself I, I'm not playing The Sims anymore. Or, you know, when I go into Sims, I'm not playing uh, Planet Zoo anymore. They're different. But it's just funny how your mind, your mind remembers that. Put that there as a little edging thing and we'll kind of bring... Let's bring this one down. Down this way. 
Does anybody else get that where their their uh, mind or um, memory remembers different commands and things like that? I mean, sure, it's got the same plot in a way, but it does go deeper about um, whether we should treat these animals or dinos. Yeah, you know, you're right, um, especially in the last uh, Jurassic World movie, right? Because they kind of contemplate whether they should let them all die or they should release them all, that kind of thing. Yeah. No, you're right. And I am by no means saying they're bad movies. I love them. Um, just kind of poking fun at the whole premise of a dinosaur movie. Yeah, but I, I do. I love I love those movies. Love those movies. I gotta figure out. We kind of watch movies in, in like, the sets of, like, when they came, or, um, series, rather. Uh, either that or by actor. So, right now, because I watched Forrest Gump the other night with, um, Drew and Estan's movie stream, um, now I'm on a Tom Hanks kick again, and I, I love Tom Hanks as an actor. He's, I think he's a great actor. Um, but I watched Castaway the other night and, um, tonight I think I'm going to watch Catch Me If You Can because Catch Me If You Can is probably on my top five favorite movie list, um, because I love Tom Hanks so much and because I love Leo so much. Savannah, important question, Godzilla or Kong, who's going to win? I don't know because, and I, I... I hope nobody gets upset. <laughs> I don't think I've watched either movie or either movies because I know there's many Godzilla and many uh, King Kong movies, but I don't think I've seen them. <laughs> so I, I mean, I know Godzilla is a monster in King Kong or is a, like a dinosaur lizard giant thing and destroys the city and King Kong is a uh, gorilla or ape or monkey, whatever. So like, I know what they are, but I've not watched the movies so I don't really know uh like what they do I guess <laughs> so I don't know but if I if I had to I mean I don't know that's hard though because I was gonna say I think Godzilla because he's he's uh, a lizard and he's got all those sharp teeth and everything like that but but King Kong is giant and he's a gorilla yeah I don't know that's a hard one that's a hard question Catch Me If You Can is a great movie. based Yeah, and I love that part of it too, Silver Fox, is that it's based on a true story. I think that that is, that's awesome. Uh, also, Camp Cretaceous just is a bunch of kids uh, beating up a Carno for a series. Hey, Bold. There you go, Bold answered. Godzilla, obviously. Perfect. I didn't see you come in. Welcome. We've just finished placing a ton of rocks, and now I don't know what to do from here. <laughs> but we only have about three minutes left, so let's hit play, and let's just go ahead and look. Look at our little silly friend over here, and I'll spend some time chit-chatting. I mean, we've been chit-chatting this whole time, but there we go. Beautiful. Like I said, I do have to end on time, because i got to prepare to jump in with S. Dan, show off his, uh, his Suyana build as well. I think Godzilla is going to win, uh, but you want King Kong to win? That's a fair point. We made a go to, to Hawaii. There's tours you can take to view the Jurassic Park sets. Yeah, um, I love going to, uh, visiting Hawaii. I've been, um, a couple times and Kauai is my favorite island just because it's so tropical and it's it's a lot less, you know, typically touristy than, than the other islands are. Um, but that's where they filmed most of it, right? Um, and I would, I would love to go on a tour like that. I'm sneaky like a ninja. You are, Bold. <laughs> you are sneaky like a ninja. Uh, Godzilla has radioactive super breath. See, I didn't know that. I had no idea Godzilla has radioactive super breath. Because I didn't, I didn't watch the movies. I don't know. All right. Well, our Sealy friend is not moving here. I was hoping he would kind of wake up and, you know, flop around. There you go. Let's do some flopping. We like, we like your jiggly floppiness. Uh, good, bold person of culture. Ah, <laughs> oh, goodness. Where are you going? You're going away from us. Should we watch you on the camera? There we go. 
watch you on the camera. You can even visit Jurassic Park Waterfall and Indiana Jones places. Oh, what Indiana Jones places? Are we still talking about Hawaii? Was part of that filmed in Hawaii? Because that I didn't know. I, those are another set of movies that I absolutely love is the Indiana Jones movies. And if we're talking about movies... Oh, this is flipping around way too much. Can you... I don't, I don't want to change the view so frequently. There we go. <laughs> um... If we're talking about movies and, like, facts and stuff, my boyfriend is the one that that loves movies and he knows all that kind of stuff. Like, who the actors are and where it was filmed and stuff about the director and blah, blah, blah. Um, I like watching movies to watch, you know, how they were written and, and stuff like that. But he's the one that kind of knows all those fun facts. I'm really terrible at it. <laughs> Plopping. Yes. They plop all over the place. The start of Raiders of the Lost Ark is filmed in Kauai. Oh, cool. I, I didn't know that. It makes sense, though. It definitely looks like Hawaii. Yeah, I, I love Hawaii. And actually, fun fact, um, uh, more insights on Savannah's life. I taught and danced uh, Polynesian dance for a really long time. And part of that included learning about uh, Hawaiian culture and and um, Polynesian culture as well. So um, I, I visited Hawaii a few times Um and really, really enjoy going over there and, and going to luau's and, and things like that for that reason. But also, also because um, I like seeing the area where Jurassic Park was filmed. Visiting movie sites are the best. Hawaii is awesome. Yeah, New Zealand is like near the top of my bucket list to go visit for sure. I would love to. New Zealand, Scotland, Germany, um, Australia, and Africa. Uh, South Africa specifically, uh, is probably the very top of my bucket list um, in order to go visit. I would I would love to go visit those sometime. Like the place where the tribals chase Indiana and he swings from vines. Yeah, 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 yeah. That definitely looks like Kauai. Yeah. Seal flops six feet. Must nap now. Yep. A hundred percent. I have days like that. Where I kind of like pull myself out of bed, I migrate to the couch, and then I pull myself off the couch and migrate back to my bed. <laughs> ah. Well, now that we know that fun fact, you're going to have to teach us some dance moves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I definitely have the capability, but I don't... Uh -huh. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Have you ever seen Battle at Big Rock? No, I have no idea what you're talking about. I have not seen that. Oh, Jojo, are you from Germany? Yeah, my my family um is is German descent. So none of my direct family was born in Germany, but that's where the majority of my ancestors are from. Um and I I would absolutely love to visit. Absolutely love to visit. And it this sentence always sounds wrong out of context, but I love World War II stuff. Um, I obviously don't love that it happened, uh, <laughs> but I love, like, I would, I would want to go visit, um, the museum and the sites and things like that, uh, to go see, see that kind of stuff. Because I think that that, that history is, um, interesting to me, um, but obviously not because it happened. Uh, but that's where I say that sentence kind of taken out of context sounds bad sometimes, but I'm, I'm really interested, uh, in history stuff, um, and World War II stuff really, really fascinates me. I'm stuck in England, a million miles away from anywhere, even slightly exotic. Yeah, well, I mean, that's if San Diego, we're in a desert. The The environment around me is is not exotic at all. I mean, we get the ocean, but it's not, it's not exotic. We're a desert. You did some swing and Latin dance classes in university. That's awesome. Yeah, I took, um, I took like, like a general, oh, that's an interesting position you're taking there, little seal. <sighs> does not look comfortable. <laughs> uh, but I took some like general dance classes in high school, like, you know, that just kind of covered everything, hip hop, you know, all that kind of stuff, um, ballet. Um, but then Polynesian dance is really what I kind of stuck with and, and took off with. You were born in Germany, but I don't remember any of it because my family moved back to the States when I was six months old. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was born and raised in California, born and raised in San Diego. I've never lived anywhere else, but I love to travel. Hi, Dylan's World. We're just getting ready to wrap up here. I'm kind of stalling because I'm having fun chatting with you guys, but the stream is technically 
technically over, but happy to see you here. Happy that you said hi. My hips don't lie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Battle at Big Rock is a short Jurassic World film showing an allosaur fighting a triceratops. Uh, wow. Huh. Interesting. Whenever I think of triceratops, um, I think of, uh, like at Disneyland, when you go on the train and you see the, like the Fantasia behind the scenes where, um, the triceratops is, or no, that's, that's a stegosaur. What am I thinking? Wow. Savannah, you got to get your dinosaurs straight if you're going to start doing pre prehistoric kingdom stuff. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a stegosaurus. <laughs> Never mind. Scratch that. But that's what came to mind when I, when I heard triceratops. Was the Triceratops fighting the, or the, um, uh, Stegosaurus fighting the, uh, the T-Rex. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to sign off. And, um, like I said, if you, uh, uh, Heather or Silver Fox, did we already link S. Dan's channel? Um, and if not, could we? That would be fantastic if you guys could do that. Um, because we're going to be going... <laughs> God, look at the seal. Why? <laughs> Why do you have to be so strange? Anyway, if we could link Estan's channel, that would be phenomenal. Because uh, in about 30 minutes or so, I'll be hopping on a call with Estan. And we're going to be showing off the... Um, Cayman habitat that I built for his Suyana Zoo. So I would absolutely love to see you guys there and chit chat with you guys some more. Um, we can continue our conversation and, and have fun over there. You always only catch the streams at the end, you swear. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. But they'll be up. You can watch them again if you want to. Um, but like, I, like I, I just finished saying, if you still want to chat and hang out, I would be happy to see you over on Estan's channel. That would be um, That would be great. Keep chatting with you. Oh, you did, but you'll do it again. Thank you, Silver Fox. That would be great. That would be awesome if people didn't get a chance to click on that. Thank you. You're the best. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, so I'm going to sign off, guys. Thanks so much, uh, like always, for hanging out, chatting with me. These streams are getting more and more fun. Um, I look forward to them more and more. And so eventually we might up our stream schedule. Um, but uh, yeah, I was happy to jump back into River Rock. So glad you guys enjoyed this one. And um, I will see you in about 30 minutes if you guys jump over. But thanks for hanging out, guys. Bye.